So welcome. This is the last presentation for, for this morning on the stream uh, Investment Portfolio Management and Trends. Uh, the presentation here is uh, by Scope Group, Michael Bolle, and uh, he's going to talk about uh, the credit rating data market, how is it is evolving. Michael, I'll let you the show. Thank you very much, Antonio, and uh, well, good afternoon now, uh, everyone. Um, so indeed, indeed, like last year, uh, I wanted to talk about the credit rating data market. And um, uh, this time looking at uh, the fact that uh, Scope has been accepted by uh, the ECB for ECAF purposes and what the, uh, the impact is of that as well. So <clears throat> I'd like to start by just uh, sort of sharing what happened. Um, on 10th of November 2023, and Guillaume Jolivet, the, the CEO for Scope Ratings, accepted a call from uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, the, the president for uh, the ECB, to, uh, to say that the press release announcing uh, our acceptance was going to go out uh, in about 30 minutes. So not much longer, uh, we got the, the invite for the glo global town hall from Florian Schuller, the uh, CEO and founder of Scope Group, uh, to sort of share the news and, uh, of course, uh, take a moment to celebrate. It had been uh, many, many years for Scope to, to get to that place, uh, not least because even, even before you can apply for ECAF acceptance, you need to have a certain uh, minimum coverage. And you need to have that minimum coverage for a minimum of three years. And then the ECB starts uh, really going through all your methodologies and your processes, and it's a very rigorous process. So we were certainly happy uh, that we finally made that. Uh, for those of you in the room that are like, okay, ECAF, uh, what is that exactly? Allow me to give the, the 20 second uh, overview. <clears throat> so uh, the ECB strives for price stability in the, uh, the market and, and the preservation of the value uh, for, of the euro. And through its monetary policies, it can set the interest rates at which banks can deposit money with the ECB and also borrow money. And uh, when banks borrow money from the ECB, they need to post collateral. And uh, this collateral needs to be of a certain credit worthiness, a certain quality. They will only generally accept uh, everything that is investment grade or triple B minus and above. Um, and that assessment is basically what they do through the ECAF. It's the, the Eurosystem credit assessment framework. And um, uh, so they not only use that framework to look at uh, when they lend money, but also when they're buying securities directly in the market. Um, so we were certainly uh, pleased that we were finally added there then as one of the ECAIs that they would be using our ratings as part of that assessment. Uh, so we're now the only European rating agency that's part of it, uh, and the others that were already there were S&P, Moody's, Fitch, and DBRS. Um, ah, yeah. And maybe another nice uh, anecdote was uh, from, from uh, Christine Lagarde was like, of course, it is not only good news for Scope, but it is also good news for Europe that there is now a European rating agency. Nice words. Now, here's the but. We've been accepted, but the ECB is now working on the operational integration. So, um, uh, if you would go to their website, you would find this note, like, okay, they're working on integrating it. And another thing that you may notice is like, okay, well, you've got acceptance, but what is this thing with the ABS? We've also worked on ABS. We're going to be approved for all asset classes, but they weren't quite ready yet to announce that. Well, we are expecting that it, is, it will be uh, integrated and all done within the next, uh, well, we still hope before the summer. Uh, the, the last update was middle of June, but we'll have to see if, that, uh, if they're going to make that. And then we will be fully integrated. And, and the key thing there that needs to happen is that they're integrating the data in what is called the, the central securities database, which is the database which all of the national central banks are using to look at the different securities. So uh, our ratings are now being integrated there too. 
Nonetheless, uh, also uh, a few people from uh, uh, the ECB, uh, a few senior representatives uh, wrote a blog about what it actually means now that uh, scope has been added. And uh, they certainly put it as the acceptance of scope ratings is a milestone for the euro system. And so the impact uh, can be described on, on like these three points. Um, higher liquidity value for issuers. So if you look at everything that is going to be rated by scope, all the issuers and all of the instruments, there can now be used also as part of, uh, uh, as collateral with the ECB. And so there are also a lot of uh, instruments that are only rated by scope. And the ECB anecdotally sort of mentioned that it's about 5% of everything that they look at. So this means that, uh, yeah, also those, for those issuers and those instruments, there is greater uh, liquidity. Moreover, uh, also because of these thresholds, sometimes it will be the case that scope rates something investment grade and the other ones may not. And at that point, it can still be, it's still eligible to be used as collateral uh, when scope uh, rates higher. Um, and then we are expecting wider uh, investor acceptance. Uh, sort of the fact that the ECB has uh, gone through the process of rigorously assessing scope, uh, a lot of investors, of course, follow the ECB and the ECIs that it uses. Um, uh, because uh, uh, also, of course, if they're posting the collateral, they want to look at also those ratings from those rating agencies which are eligible. Um, and to sort of help this, because it's kind of, it, we notice that very much, that there are a lot of you in the room like, yeah, great, we, we want to do it, we want to have more competition, we want to have different views. Uh, but the process is not always clear, right? Like, particularly if you're a bank or an insurance company, how do you nominate scope as an ECI? And it is a, a, a bit of a process. And for that reason, we also wrote a guide about it. Um, I, I would say come see Scope and you can get a copy of the guide uh, or just drop me an email and uh, we can help you with that. Uh, and just generally we're expecting that uh, there will be now more competition in the space. So this is both on the side of uh, the, and this is now that we're on a level playing field, right? Before we were sort of missing this last piece uh, here in Europe to, to be able to uh, compete on an equal footing. And now that we can, um, it gives us new opportunities to work with issuers as well as investors. So in terms of what, just to, so that you understand what Scope is going to be doing next, um, we, it's, it has opened up new asset classes and markets also for Scope to work in. So some, and we're seeing sort of the, the results of the fact that we've now been accepted. It was only last week that uh, three German states announced that they will now also solicit scope uh, for a, uh, a rating. Uh, we're seeing large financial institutions now nominating scope as an ECI and uh, uh, soliciting our, uh, a rating from scope. Um, and also in the structured finance space, there have always been these deals which are labeled ECAF deals. It's basically that they're packaged and the only rating agencies that could work on them were the rating agencies that were accepted for ECAF. So the fact that we can work on those now too uh, gives, uh, gives us more potential. Um, and then in terms of for scope to go to the US market and also get the NRSRO status there, uh, this is not something that we're looking to plan for 2025. Uh, there's just still uh, a bit more work for us to do here in Europe. So how is the credit rating data market evolving? So the, the last study that uh, uh, ESMA did on uh, the market was from uh, December last year. Um, and that's where they always show who is covering what in the market. And so it hasn't changed much from the year before, also in terms of rank order. Um, so if you look at the corporate space, uh, and, and so what they look at is all of the uh, uh, instruments that have a rating in the market, and who covers what. So we cover 36% of everything that is rated, and thereby in the corporate space. And so thereby we've actually surpassed the uh, Fitch. Uh, on the financial institution side, we're still lagging a little. Uh, this is particularly to do with the, the instruments we cover. 
And in the sovereign and public finance space, we're actually in second. So we've uh, uh, surpassed Fitch and Moody's. Um, so it sort of shows that you know, we're a true alternative also when it comes to, your European, uh, uh, to the European coverage. Uh, and when it comes to the credit quality steps in terms of how ratings are mapped to the credit quality steps which are used for the uh, regula regulatory requirement uh, regulations, um, w our ratings have exactly the same value as it does for the others. Um, <clears throat> this concept of being nominated as an e or being able to be used as an ECI, uh, uh, we're all over Europe. Uh, we're also in the UK, by the way. So we were always in the UK, but ever after Brexit, they gave everybody a temporary registration. But that has now also been converted to a permanent registration. And we're also in Switzerland and in Norway, and uh, we can be used in all of those places as a rating agency. Um, and with the US there, we're just, uh, as I said, uh, planning to do that in 2025 to start the application process. Also something which happened actually in, in May last year was um, where ESMA did a, a sort of deeper study on the credit rating market. And they've also started to sort of move away from talking about the big three, but rather start talking about the big five. Of course, it was always their intent to create more competition in the market. And, uh, but also there, you know, you can see the five uh, on the list and, and Scope is there is the only uh, uh, European credit rating agency uh, that is uh, uh, part of those big five. So what is, because what is the issue when we, when we have a very concentrated and oligopolistic market structure? And the, the, the issues we generally run into are that uh, we also believe that it's important for Europe that there is a European rating agency looking at European credits uh, with our own perspectives and understanding of the methodologies in the market. And this is very much also in terms of what we're trying to promote uh, with the Capital Markets Union and help more along those lines. Um, but I, I think this uh, reduction of opinions, if, you, if you're very concentrated, what we've sort of seen is that if, if you've got three US rating agencies that sync from the same hymn sheet and move in unison, it doesn't add much value for a risk manager. So taking as many different perspectives is what helps the, the risk managers there. And we had an, an interesting case study with AXA that actually the risk management uh, uh, departments specifically uh, yeah, chose Scope to be an ECI because they wanted those different perspectives. And they thought it was their duty under the prudent person principle. Um, and then, uh, of course, it's become, it's quite difficult sometimes to manage what you are allowed to do and not allowed to do with uh, your rating licenses because they can restrict it by location or by the type of use. And all of this increases operational costs for you guys. And of course, the way that they price things, there have been excessive charging in the market. Uh, first of all, because they charge the issuers for the, uh, doing the rating, and then they, they make you pay for the use of those ratings. And Scope has sort of taken a different stance on that by sort of saying, we only charge the market once. If the issuer pays, it's free to use for the, uh, for the users. And, well, and we have a lot of coverage that is only paid for by the users and not by the issuers. And so these practices have led to excessive charging uh, and also the regular price hikes that you've, you've experienced. Uh, just a couple of months ago in February, the FCA actually had a study on the wholesale market data and um, uh, looking at credit ratings. Uh, and I just remember seeing the statistics that almost 50% of the users of credit ratings saw uh, an increase of more than 50% in their fees uh, over, over uh, just a few years. So sort of like if, you, if, you're, if you've been looking at, all right, maybe we can, there are now alternatives, there are scope. Uh, what are the points on why you should uh, consider using scopes ratings? And we generally boil it down to, to these three uh, points. First, it's the European angle. So it is that greater diversity of opinion. We have a different perspective. We, we look at it in a different way. And that helps those risk managers, like I explained on the, the AXA case earlier. But also for the, from an investor perspective, there's a lot that we also cover that others may not cover. So also when you are an investor, 
it gives you it gives you the opportunity to look at things that are rated then by scope and also include that within your investment universe. Um, and of course, then we are now the only one with the ECAF status, and we're pretty confident and have some experience now to say that as soon as somebody would start adding scope as a nominated ECI, uh, that ultimately it will lead to some capital optimization benefits uh, across the firm. We've sort of been focused on making it easy to use. So first of all, we've just said like, okay, we do everything on an enterprise uh, basis. So as soon as the organization is licensed, it doesn't matter what purpose you use it for internally, you can use it. If it is your risk management, your, your fund management, your trading, uh, whatever it may be. And we do have a, a separate license for uh, those that also want to distribute. Uh, we've seen uh, interest and I think there's a big opportunity also for asset managers to distribute scopes uh, ratings. Uh, asset servicers and to make those available uh, to the uh, to the end users, uh, and so we've also found an easy way to make that uh, available. Um, people can always get the ratings, of course, directly from Scope, and uh, uh, but we've also started to work on onboarding more and more uh, data distribution and uh, delivery partners. Uh, most recently, we had it uh, big in the Netherlands; uh, they're also here uh, today. Um, and we've uh, started working with uh, WM Data Service, uh, and that was announced, uh, I think February it was, and uh, they will be operational from uh, from August timeframe. And and a lot of you here in the German market certainly will already have connections with them. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, we <laughs> we do think that there can be fair charging. So at this point around, we only charge uh, the market once. And um, uh, maybe another small nuance is that the, the U.S. rating agencies generally offer these services out of the non-regulated business. It's the sister company of the rating agency, uh, while Scope does this out of the rating agency. And therefore, we're also subject to the non-discriminatory pricing uh, uh, rules that uh, ESMA imposes on uh, rating agencies. Um, so... Uh, I think uh, I think therefore with uh, with scope we can bring that uh, you know more competition to the market and our, and our approach is definitely to make it fair and also more predictable when we would uh, make an offer to you. So I really wanted to leave it at that and uh, and open up the floor uh, if there are any questions. Please. Will this situation stay, uh, as it was also for Senator and Post Moodles in the past, that uh, um, they uh, in the beginning made you addicted and then you had to pay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess now you have choice, right, over time. So there, there will be more alternatives. I mean, one of the uh, points about doing this out of the regulated rating agency is if we wanted to even change our pricing policy, we first need to like, also agree on this with ESMA. They're sort of like doing this stuff out of non-regulated businesses. It also makes it a lot easier for the others to change. Uh, for us, that's actually quite difficult. There's absolutely no intention for any of us to, to change uh, on this. Any other questions? So if there is no other question, Thank you very much, Michael. You're very welcome. Thank you Take very much to the audience. And uh, enjoy the rest of the day here at the DCAF. Thank you very much.